Well, we were on a bomb run, and far in the distance, you could see a burst of flak at our altitude. And it just continually was there. And we're approaching it. And then suddenly, we're very close to it. And all of a sudden, the last one blew up about six feet in front of the aircraft. Uh, but it fortunately was above the cockpit, and so the shell was up there, and I'm here talking to you now. That's it. How does it feel? It's scary as all get out. I graduated from flight school in March of 1944. I was 19 years old. I was then instructed to go to B-17 training in Sebring, Florida. We were trained there a few months, and evidently they thought that my skills were good enough at that age, so they gave me a full crew. And so we headed north as directed, flew over my hometown and waved to my mother, because I live in Massachusetts, and I had the scarf out the window. They had whatever. And let's say probably I flew more than most people would fly over anywhere, but I figured we couldn't get penalized because they're gonna say, don't go to combat, so we did whatever we wanted. That's a beautiful airplane. It, it's no problem, it's, it's great. And it flies easy. It flies totally easy, very supportive, and so I have considerable hours in it. We flew from Gander, Newfoundland to Valley, Wales, gave them the airplane, and that's what we were doing. That's what the whole force was doing. And then I was sent to my base that I was assigned to at 379 Bomb Group in Kimball. And that's when I started my career as combat. Colonel Lyle, Lewis Lyle, believed that if you fly a formation, you fly it as tight as you can. Therefore, you have in each B-17, 10 50 caliber machine guns they're going to say, let's go over where there's only a couple. So therefore, we were attacked by that, but uh, let's say it got easier. Mac and I, we practiced and we made sure we played full great formation. We stuck right to it. And so I was advanced to the lead group. group. Uh, then I lost my crew and we had all lead group personnel. So that you get to go to fly tomorrow, you got a mission and you didn't know those people, or you didn't know those people. And so how that contended, and then that's how I completed my balance of the 35 missions, which took place on April 4th of 1945 in Kim Bolton, England. So the passing board was just up the road a little bit. Moldsworth was next door, and the hundreds of there. They were in the exact middle, the middle portion of England, north of London. That was the first air division. Prior to the Bombay doors being open, you are in formation. Your 12 per aircraft are in that element structure for a squadron. As you approach, after takeoff, transit, you get to a point someplace before the target is the initial point of the bomb run, which means IP, it's the IP, the initial point of the bomb run. At that point in time, I'm the aircraft commander. I turn that command over to the bombardier. He is running the, he's running the whole show now because the Northern bomb site is there to do what it has to do. I sit there like this and listen to Glenn Miller music because there's nothing I do unless something crazy happens. So, and the initial point of the bomb run can be 10 miles, it can be 10 minutes, it can be whatever. And, but that Norton bomb site with the bombardier has control. And the other thing that happens with every bomber, as you approach the target, particularly after the initial point of the bomb on the IP, you put the group together as close as you can. Very, very close. You practically touch and wink. When the moment this person is released, the bombardier released the bombshell thing, if you just drop yours now, if you're in that attitude, it's going to be long. If it's here, it's going to be there. If it's going to be there or whatever. So you have to be as close because you could, you could, a bomb drop a thousand feet from the target was wasted. But again, you made sure that you could be as stable 
and that's where that went. I was at a target, don't remember what it was, but we had heavy flack, and my nose gunner at that point called up and said, uh, Herman isn't shooting very well today. And then all of a sudden he called me back because the shell took the end of his finger off. I told him to shut up. <laughs> I, I don't know which finger came off, but... Well, we had a combination of all kinds of damage, and the choice was whether to take or to abandon them or take them and bring them back to England. And there was a base, I think that was the name of it, was Munson, specially made for bringing damaged aircraft in. And we managed to put four of them on the ground that way. And the, the only other plane that I had trouble was over Frankfurt, and we were at 25,000 feet, and the number four engine was on fire. So with that structure, reached down, got my parachute, and got ready to go, because I never wore a parachute. We had the chest pack, and ended up going to that. And uh, so suddenly, we, I decided, well, we'll give it one more try. So I put it into a huge, we didn't jump. I put it into a huge side slip and fell so that the fire would go to the edge of the wing versus back to the wing tank portion. And we fell 15,000 feet that way in a big, big absolute slide skid. My personal opinion is today I'm here. Today I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm going to go on a mission tomorrow. Once I'm on a mission, I don't have any thoughts about anything else at all, except simply that I'm scheduled to fly today. I fly today. I got up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I ended up going to breakfast at 5. I ended up going to briefing. I ended up being on a mission. My only thing is, this is my job today. Everything else is no consequence. You can make sure, make your aircraft is great, make sure your crew is right, make sure everything that you do is right, go to the target, if you see and have considerable enemy action, so that's the job. You are sure that you may not return, but you don't have time. I personally didn't have time to think about it. I'm going there, I'm going to do what it does, the best I know how, turn around, come back, and so that I'm capable of doing it tomorrow. And that was all of us, in my honest opinion. We lost 3,000 airplanes, four engine aircraft in the 8th Air Force. They had a raid in Berlin on February 3rd, 1945. They took at this and we had 1,000 B-17s in Division 1 and 3. The second division was B-24s. So the total aircraft that went to Berlin that day totaled 1,000. They were in the bomber train that was 173 miles long. We dropped bombs, in particular our group did, and I suspect others had. We dropped bombs for 45 minutes, and each B-17 carried 10 500-pounders, so that's 5,000 pounds. Each B-17 had 2,900 gallons of gas. In multiply that by 1,000, that says that's 2.9 million gallons of gas you use on that one raid. Think of the magnificent planning, support by this country to take and be able to support that and bring gas enough to go on another mission with the supplies the next day and the next day and the next day. My bomb group, Kimball, the 379th, flew 337 missions. We had an airplane called Old Gaffey. It was 157 missions that it flew. I didn't like to fly it because I figured the time might be running out. There's no way of explaining. I'm 94 years old. I've lived through all this. And from that level of the first plane ride in the early 30s to my last B-17 ride last year. The beauty of the country as it was here, how supportive everything was. Go there was an occasional strike, but nobody knew what a strike was. Everybody just did everything in the world to support one action. Totally impressed. I mean, I, I, end, I end up being involved with presentations to schools or certain organizations 
the total organization here with everyone that we've talked to or anyone that's assisted us, volunteers, the staff, headquarters, totally is not the right easy word. They're magnificent. That's all I can say there. Seeing the Memphis Bell and what they've done and what the organization, the museum is able to do. I've seen the Memphis Bell. I'm not sure whether I flew it when it was turned back after the war bond sale to the training command, but it was in one of my organizations where I was being trained. Uh, I understand that it was in the mud flats in Memphis. I saw it there. I've seen it in other places. And when they made the decision to take and bring it here and do what they've done, again, it's unaccountable for the endeavor that went there and how wonderful it is. You being a B-17 former pilot, this is displayed like it's on a bombing run. Bomb bay doors open, wheels up, it's on stands, people can look up. How do you think of the display of flying? Didn't look at it that way. I didn't look at it. That's how it's displayed. That's the right attitude. <laughs> that's the right attitude. Yes. No, it's, uh, it's displayed. You guys can't do it better. Fantastic.